Hi everybody. I bought a bunch of these 18650 Sony high drain cells. I bought about 50 of them actually. So I'm finding uses for them and I did a few small projects and one of them is uh, a power bank and usually they come with only one cell so I modify this particular one cell power bank into two and it's very simple I just spot welded an extra one on top of it and same thing for the other side and then I just uh, unsolder the old wires from the positive and the negative and then soldered it back on on the positive side and for the negative the original configuration is like a thin nickel strip that runs all the way from the negative to up here and then my negative wire from the USB port board will be soldered to the negative here so that's the original configuration so I just followed it and of course when you um, put a 18650 in in close proximity with a circuit board you have to try to insulate it there's a cardboard like material on the bottom cell the positive side so uh, you try to prevent it from coming into contact with the circuit board and uh, on top of that I wrap a piece of Kapton tape on it to further insulate it and then I just put it back in like this this is the, this is the original USB power bank and in order to enclose it I made another piece, a top piece and this I used a 3D printer to print just a cover I'm actually not very good in making uh, 3D printed materials I have a very minimal knowledge of uh, making parts but most of the parts that you make would be like a a box in this case like a rectangular box and there's pieces that uh, you can glue on so I made this is a stop piece from when you insert it it will prevent the 18650 from moving forward so this is it so all I have to do is I'm gonna add a little more packing material so the 18650 uh, batteries will not be moving around and then I just enclose it and then uh, I'm gonna epoxy it together and that would be a uh, expanded or two cell power bank instead of a single cell so that would be much more useful than a single cell because a single cell with the newer cell phones you cannot really fully charge it uh, some of them are like 3 amp hour the battery so uh, if you use a single cell power bank it's not going to work too well even with a two cell power bank because the output is kind of low it's like 800 milliamp it will charge but it will only charge your cell phone slowly but at least you can charge it fully with two cells so this is one of the changes or modification I made um, I don't want to call it hack hack sounds like you're making something worse so the next modification is this LED light it's not a very bright one uh, 
but it uses three AAA cell and holder like this. So I change it to one that is you that can you use an a single 18650. But in order to make it work, see it's the original one. The length of the flashlight is not that long, so it it won't fit. And in order to make it fit, I have to make an adapter for it. And the switch, instead of using the original adapter uh, switch in, on the back, I'm gonna I made my own uh, switch. And the operation will be similar to this old type Craftsman LED flashlight. This one has no permanent switch on. You have to keep your thumb on it to, to make it light. Same idea with this one. There's no switch that is going to be 100% uh, on. So what you would be doing is to press this. And you, when as long as you press your thumb on it, the LED would, would light up. So let's see here. This is the cover. Yeah. This is the cover I made for this here. So the whole thing goes together like this. You can see inside is a positive. If you can see, right, the positive. And the negative is this strip on the side. So the very important thing is not to short out the two pieces or you're going to be in, in trouble because there's quite a bit of energy in this 18650. So this would be the negative and this is the original ring that fits over here. So I just solder a piece of uh, nickel strip to it. And then I made a, again using the 3D printer, printed like a cap, right? So I can enclose this, right? And then I put this in here, right? So, so when I press the end, right? When I press the end, the flashlight. With light and the uh, intensity is much improved from the three triple A batteries, and it's going to last a very long time. With this type of batteries, whenever you take the flashlight out to use it, they're dead, or they 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 can only last a very short time, but with the 18650 it's going to last a long time so put back the original cap on there All right and then I just fit this plastic piece on top and then right like this and then when I use the switch it on with the just presses And of course, when you're doing this kind of project, it helps to have a 3D printer. They're not expensive, uh, 150 you can get one. And you don't have to be an expert. There are a lot of, uh, of uh, pre-made uh, you know, uh, files, STL files, Thinkiverse, and you can download them. Or you can use SketchUp or whatever kind of software out there. Uh, the other thing is like I was telling you about the spot welding. You can make a spot welder with an inexpensive 18 amp hour battery. I have a video on that and I'll put a link to it. And it's nothing more than a couple of pieces of copper wire 
and I added a solenoid and a tim timer so when you make the connection when you sort of like shorting out the electro you you have the solenoid so nothing will stick together and, and, and cause a, a major overload or um, make the spot welder un uncontrollable but they're relatively simple to make and it will make your projects much more professional see here this is the spot weld that I made right they're very professional looking but uh, you don't have to spend like two three hundred dollars on a uh, commercial spot welder right the one I made is less than thirty dollars so in making these projects you can use these USB charging board these boards are like a dollar or so a piece the new ones they have battery over discharge connection the two middle pins you connect to your battery and then on the outer side you have the output left and uh, positive and negative and when your battery voltage drops below 2.4 volt the output from the battery battery will be disconnected so you won't over discharge your battery this type of board will give you a little better protection so you can use it to make uh, something like this this is a kit that is like a light chaser I bought it this only like a couple of dollars this is like there's a circuit board this is a circuit board and you get you can just uh, it's like uh, painting by number so you solder by number and the only thing that might you might run into difficulty is these two resistors you have to find out which one is uh, it's like a 2.2k and the other one is a different value so you might have to use a multimeter to make sure that you put the right one in the right place and then the rest is you just plug them in and you solder them and I put it into a battery box like this right and this is the charging board the switch and 18650 and I spot welded the terminals right it's seven o'clock you had a switch and you have the light chaser for two dollars uh, excluding the battery and this is way cool I always think this is very cool a running LED light All right if you want to remind yourself of something you know take some pills or whatever you put this next to it you're gonna you're not gonna forget that you have to do something with the keys or your pills or whatever and this battery will last for weeks running something like this and when you need to charge just plug it in the USB port and you can charge it so those are the few I would say modifications that I did with the new batch of uh, 18650s that I got and um, they're very simple modification but of course like I said it would be much more helpful if you have a 3D printer if you have a spot welder uh, but all those you can make yourself uh, it involves a little bit of uh, uh, I guess mechanical electrical knowledge you have to know how to solder and things like that but uh, yeah they there are lots of videos out there they have spot welders that are very professional very expensive some DIY DIY ones are very well done very sophisticated the ones that I made are very cheap very simple but 
they work so I'm happy with them and even if they're simple little things like this one I always find this is way cool even though this is like uh, technology from years and years ago like you look at this just like you're looking at Niagara Falls wow you say wow that's Niagara Falls and you look at this wow cool all right that's the video for today thanks for watching